Hey, Calvary Kids, it's Pastor Harris here with our first ever Good Friday scavenger hunt. We're going to have a lot of fun today. I'm excited that you guys could be here with me online. And today we're going to be basically doing a scavenger hunt. And you guys are going to help me tell the story of Good Friday. So here's how this is going to work. We're going to have a list pop up here on the screen in just a minute. All right, it's 10 items that you have to go through your house and find each of these items. Then what I want you to do, once you've found all the items, gather them all together, bring them back in front of your TV or computer, and then start the video, then start the video again. So basically pause it, find all the items, bring them back, and then start the video again. And together, we're going to tell the story of Good Friday with all these different items you find. Now, just to make it a little more fun, a little more competition here, what I want you to do is pause the video, go find all the stuff. When you come back, post your time in the comments. So if it took you three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, however long it takes you to go and find all these items and bring them back, you can have your mom or your dad time you. All right? Now, let's remember, we're going to be honest here. So nobody, no, because this is this isn't possible. Nobody's going to say, oh, I found it all in five seconds. No, you didn't. You know you didn't. Be honest. We're going to have some fun. We're going to see who can find all these items the fastest. All right. So pause the video, post your time when you get all these items. And then together, we're going to tell the story of Good Friday. So are you guys ready? All right. So here's the list. Ready, set, go. All right, great job, guys, finding all the items. All right, make sure you have all of them together. I've got all of my items right here in this box. And so together, we're going to tell the story of Good Friday. All right, so I'm going to open up my box here with all my items in it. And the first item on the list, remember, is a flashlight. So if you've got your flashlight, hold up your flashlight. All right, this is where we are going to start our story of Good Friday. All right, so here's the background information before we start the story. Jesus has come into Jerusalem. If you saw our Children's Church video last week, remember, everybody was so excited about Jesus coming into town. And Jesus chose to have a very special meal with his best friends. And then after that meal, the Bible tells us that Jesus and his disciples, his closest friends, they went out to a garden called Gethsemane. And in this garden, Jesus went away from his disciples and he prayed. He prayed to God, asking God for help and for strength because he knew what was about to happen. Now, there are a lot of people, there are a lot of people in Jerusalem that liked Jesus, but there are a lot of people that didn't like Jesus. There were some religious people called the Pharisees and the Sadducees who hated Jesus. They saw him as a troublemaker. They didn't like the fact that everybody liked him instead of them. And so they made this whole big plot to arrest and have Jesus killed. So what does the flashlight have to do with this? Well, on that night, it would be a Thursday night, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they gathered some soldiers together and they went looking for Jesus. They went looking for Jesus in the gardens. The Bible says they, used, they brought torches with them so that they could see. Now, I wasn't gonna, your parents weren't going to let me have you go get a torch. Okay, That just wasn't going to happen. So closest thing we could do is a flashlight. All right? So the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and these soldiers, they all come out with their torches or flashlights. 
looking for Jesus. And they find Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane praying. And one of Jesus' closest friends, his name was Judas, he pointed them out to him and said, that's Jesus, go and arrest him. And that's where the second item comes in. All right, who has, everybody got a piece of rope or a piece of string? Now, remember, back in Jesus' day, they didn't have handcuffs. So what the Bible says they did is when they got to Jesus, they took some rope, they tied up his hands so he couldn't get away, and then they led him to this little mock trial that they had made, this little, this little stage trial, so they could say they gave Jesus a trial. And at this trial, they had a bunch of people get up and, and tell lies about Jesus, about how he wanted to de destroy the, the Roman Empire and the, the laws that Moses, he was disobeying them and he was doing all these wrong things. But the truth is that Jesus, he hadn't done anything wrong. Jesus never did anything wrong. But Jesus stood there as all these people told lies about him with his hands tied. Now Jesus, this is the guy who walked on water, healed people, brought people back from the dead. If Jesus wanted to, he could have just broken right out of those ropes. He could have broken out of those ropes and run away, but he didn't. He didn't do that. He stayed, let his hands be tied, Listen to all these people tell lies about him. And at the end of this little trial, they all came to the conclusion that Jesus had to die. But there was a little problem. The Jewish people couldn't put Jesus to death without the approval of the governor, whose name was Pontius Pilate. All right, so we're going to talk about Pontius Pilate. And that's where the soap comes in. All right, so everybody hold up your soap. All right, so Pontius Pilate was the governor of the, of the Jewish people. And so they brought Jesus to him and said, we want to put this man to death. We want to kill him. And, Pont and Pilate said, what did he do wrong? And they told a bunch of lies and everything, but Pilate could tell they're lying. Jesus hadn't done anything wrong. He hadn't, he's done nothing wrong. And the Bible says that Pilate wanted to basically wash his hands of this entire matter. He wanted to let Jesus go. So he, he realized Jesus hadn't done anything wrong, so he just wanted to let him go. But the people were so insistent that he put Jesus to death. And so Pilate told him he actually brought, had a servant bring out a bowl of water, and just like you guys do at home with soap and water, he washed his hands and said, hey, look, I'm washing my hands of this entire matter. You do whatever you want to do with him. I'm not going to put this guy to death because he hasn't done anything wrong. I'm washing my hands of this entire matter. He didn't do anything wrong. But there was a problem. There were a lot of people there that were mad at Pilate and wanted Jesus to be put to death. That's where our little people come in. All right, so if you've got your little toy people or Lego people, hold those up. I brought a couple here with me, a couple extra, because basically what had happened was now there was a big crowd of people who had heard all these lies about Jesus and now wanted Jesus to be put to death. And they were yelling at Pilate, crucify him, crucify him, put him to death, put him to death. And Pilate got scared of all these people. And so Pilate, though, had a great idea. He thought this was a great idea. He said, you know what? Usually around this time, I forgive a prisoner and let a prisoner go just because to show kind of like I'm a good guy. All right, so he had this great idea. He thought, I'll give the people, all these little people here, a choice. Do they want me to let Jesus go? Or there's this guy in prison He's a murderer, he's a thief, he's done a whole bunch of bad things. His name's Barabbas. I'll ask the people, do they want to free Jesus, who hasn't done anything wrong, or do they want to free the murderer, Barabbas? He thought, surely the people would not choose to release the murderer. Of course they're going to choose to release Jesus. And so Pilate brings out Barabbas, he brings out Jesus, he sits down in his little place called the judge's bench, and he said, 
I'll release to you one of these two, Jesus or Barabbas. And to Pilate's surprise, the crowd, they started yelling for Barabbas. They wanted Barabbas to be let go and they wanted Jesus to be put to death. Pilate, Pilate still didn't understand, but the crowd was just getting so angry and so mad that he was scared for his own safety. And so he let Barabbas go and he ordered for Jesus to be crucified. So now Jesus is going to be crucified. That's where our two pencils come in. All right, so if you got your two pencils, usually if you got some mechanical pencils, that's okay, but usually pencils are made of wood. All right, so and the cross that Jesus died on was made of wood. So a cross was basically two big pieces of wood put together and basically these two pieces of wood, they would take a person and they would basically hang them on this cross until they were dead, basically. And the Bible tells us that Jesus had to carry, the, these weren't just little pieces of wood, these were giant pieces of wood. Remember, human had to be able to lay on top of them. These were giant pieces of wood. And the Bible tells us that the, the cross was placed on Jesus' back and he had to carry it all the way up this mountain to a place called Golgotha, which means the skull, not a, not a friendly place. He had to carry it all the way up. And the Bible says that he just was out of, so out of strength because people had beaten him and whipped him. that He actually collapsed and the soldiers had to get somebody else to help Jesus carry this cross all the way up this mountain, this hill to the very top. And the Bible tells us that he was crucified on it. Now what do they do in cru when, they, when they crucify somebody? Well, what they usually do, and take out your hammer. So everybody hold up your hammer. All right, if you've got your hammer, they take a hammer. They would also take our next item, which is there in the box. It's small. <laughs> our nail. Now, the nail and the hammer would be much bigger than these. So when Jesus was crucified, somebody took a hammer and a nail and hammered that nail through his hands and through his feet. I bet that hurt a lot. And then even while Jesus was up on the cross, the Bible tells us that he, he was so thirsty because remember, he, at this point, he's been beaten, he's been whipped, he's had nails put through his hands and his feet. And that's where our next item comes in, a cup. Because the Bible tells us that Jesus was so thirsty that he asked for a drink. And the soldiers went and got him a drink and, and gave him a little bit of drink. And the Bible says that after he, he took the drink, he asked his father, God, said, God, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And then he said, Father, receive my spirit. And the Bible says he died. Jesus was dead. And it was a real sad time. And the Bible says that darkness covered. It was the middle of the afternoon, but all of a sudden, everything came, became dark because the Son of God was dead. We've got two items left. Next one is a towel or a cloth. The Bible tells us that after Jesus died, his friends took him down from the cross and what they did was they, they wrapped him, kind of like, maybe like a mummy, I was going to have you guys get toilet paper, but that's a rarity right now. But also they would have taken like cloth and wrapped his body up like a mummy. And there was a, a man named Joseph who had a tomb nearby that he said Jesus could use. So they wrapped him, they wrapped up his body in cloth. And they took him over to the tomb and they, they placed him inside the tomb. And they put a big stone in front of the tomb so that, you know, the smell wouldn't get out. 
And then Pilate, remember Pilate, remember he washed his hands, tried to wash his hands of everything. He had two guards stationed at the tomb because Jesus had said before when he was alive that he was going to die and come back from the dead. Pilate probably didn't really believe it, but he didn't want any of Jesus' friends to go and steal the body and move it somewhere and then say, look, he's alive. So he had two guards placed at the tomb. And that was it. Jesus was dead, and his friends thought everything was over. But we still have one item left, and it's the box. And if you think about this box, think of it like the tomb that Jesus was in. The Bible tells us that three days later, there were some women who came to check on Jesus' body, to put some, some spices on it, to preserve it, to make sure his body was taken care of and buried properly. But when the women got there, they found that the stone had been rolled away from the door and the tomb, or our box, was now empty. Jesus wasn't there anymore. The Bible tells us that an angel was there who told them, don't be afraid because Jesus is alive. He is risen from the dead. And the women were so excited, they went and told Jesus' friends. And then the Bible tells us that Jesus appeared to the women who came to check on him, his disciples, his best friends. And over 500 people saw that, guess what? Jesus was alive. The tomb, or our box here, was completely empty. Now, that's the story of Good Friday, told with just a bunch of items that we found around the home. But why did Jesus do all this? Well, Jesus did all this because he loved you. Because he still loves you. You see, the Bible tells us that we've done things wrong, we've made mistakes. Everybody here has made a mistake. And because of those mistakes, we can't have a relationship with God. But Jesus came, lived a perfect life, and then willingly chose to die on a cross so that we could be forgiven of our sins. And then Jesus proved that he was better than death by actually beating death. He died and then he came back. It's like the empty box here. And if you guys ever have any questions about having a relationship with Jesus, because now any of us can have a relationship with Jesus, please feel free to talk to Pastor Jeff, talk to me, talk to your parents. We would love to tell you about having a relationship with Jesus Christ. And also, don't forget to tune in this Sunday for our children's church lesson. We're going to be talking more about the empty tomb, the empty box. All right? So now, you guys have got all of these items together. So here's what I want to encourage you to do. All right? Find your mom. Find your dad. Find grandma, grandpa, who's ever there in the house. Or maybe a friend once we're released from quarantine. And use these items to tell them the story about Jesus. All right, so we're going to go through this real quick one more time. The flashlight, remember some people that really didn't like Jesus, they came with torches to arrest Jesus. They took his hands, tied him up, said a bunch of mean, untrue things about him, made up a bunch of lies. They took him to Pilate. He tried to say, you know what? I don't want anything to do with this. I'm washing my hands of it. But the crowd, all our little people here, they wanted Jesus to die. And they chose to have Jesus killed on a cross. When you're killed on a cross, it's because they hammer nails into your hands and into your feet. And the Bible tells us that Jesus became thirsty as he approached death. He took a drink, and then he died. His friends took him, 
They wrapped him in cloth. They buried him. But three days later, Jesus came back to life and the tomb is empty. All right? I know you guys can do that. And I hope you had fun today. We will look at all the different times to see who found all these items the fastest. And we'll probably send them a shout out or something. Hope you guys had fun with this. Hope you guys maybe learned a little something. And we hope to see you tomorrow. We're going to be having our virtual Easter egg hunt. So be on the lookout for that. And again, on Sunday in Children's Church, we're going to be talking even more about the empty tomb. Hope you guys have a great good Friday. And we'll see you next time.